Hello there guys, it's me Unstable Voltage. Welcome to episode 19 of Europa Universalis 4 as Venice. Well, it was a couple of episodes ago now that we won our war against the Ottomans. We're still recovering from the aftermath of that somewhat. We have a reduction to our, you know, well, basically we're out of manpower. And, um... Uh, what else? We're out of manpower, we've got loans, we've got a bit of unrest, several problems that we are recovering from. Still didn't stop me going to war with Milan. Um... They didn't have any allies, so I thought it was a good time to pick on them. So that's what we're going to be doing. Again, 10 papal influence and our theologian dies. Well, we're not gaining any papal influence. We'll take the free admin power so we can use it for coring. We'll have to see how much here we can actually take. Uh, we do have 100% war score now, so let's go and see what sort of peace deal we could get. Um, if we were to take Milan, that would instantly give us 16 aggressive expansion. Uh, Milan, the Ottomans, and Genoa would coalition us. Don't care. What if we took the entire lot then? Now, that's a bigger problem. That is Hungary, Milan, Savoy, Ulm, Switzerland, Wolfsburg, Bavaria, Mainz, Frankfurt, Trier, the Ottomans, the Palatinate. No one... That's too much of a problem. What about if we didn't take the middle one and just sort of split you up? That's 28%. Still potentially brings in Hungary, Florence. It's not as bad. What about if we were to vassalize you? Could have you as a vassal. I'd sooner take the land for myself, to be honest. Well, we definitely want to take Milan. I just take the lot and just suffer the aggressive expansion. That's a lot of aggressive expansion. We don't even have our claim on Parma. I think we just take Milan. We take Milan. We take war reparations. We take as much money from you as you've got, which is hardly any. And, um... Yeah, we just do that. So we will get a coalition against us. That's not surprising. So, we do need to core. That's a lot to core. But it's a really, really good province. Really weakens them up. I've also noticed that Switzerland is now down to a single province. They only have Bern left. So, we're regaining money. We are still below our force limit. Um, naval limit is actually increasing. I would still like to get a few more light ships. We'll get them just like one or two at a time. We still have a loan, a few loans that we need to pay off. Um, we actually have six loans. We're 1,300 ducats in debt. Let's go ahead and can't repay any of our loans at the moment. We've actually had to renew one. Uh, Tunis is no longer a valid rival. Uh, we've got some spare admin power. Let's reduce that inflation. Let's get that down down nice and low. Costly trade embargo, so we can no longer rival Tunis. So let's go and revoke our embargo there. New rival. So we're rival to the Ottomans. We're rival to the Mamluks, and we'd like to be rivaled to. We don't really want to rival Hungary because that is probably going to upset Austria. But we can rival Castile. Now, how are our relationships looking with people? France quite like us. They dislike some of our aggressive expansion, but enemy of enemy now because they are also rivaled with Castile. So that's going to improve things with France. Austria, we are allied to their rival, which is Poland, which is potentially problematic. Got a bit of border fiction, some aggressive expansion. We should definitely keep improving relations with them as much as we can. Uh, we definitely want to go and um, embargo on Castile. Now, have we got everybody embargoed? Embargo in Castile, embargo in the Ottomans. We're apparently not embargoing Tunisia. Uh, the Mamluks, sorry. We need to um, embargo the Mamluks. Oh, we still have a truce with them. That's why they're not embargoed. That makes a lot of sense, I suppose. So we are steadily regaining manpower. We are still below the army force limit. Do we want to keep the current guy? We're at 96 Republican tradition, which is good. Uh, how old are you? You're 60. No, definitely not worth keeping you. We'll get another bureaucrat. And we will... I want to get some of these loans paid off, but at the same time, I don't want to fall massively below my force limit. So we'll go and get a couple of um, new recruits. 
how much money are we making? We're making eight ducats a month. And that's eight ducats a month even with a... I think we've got a few rank two advisors. Yeah, we've got a couple of rank two advisors. So I don't mind that too much. Land maintenance modifier plus 10%. Well, that's a bit, a bit annoying. See, we could still try and get rid of this uh, Venetian first... I don't think we can ever get rid of that, actually. We definitely need to try and switch over if we get to the point where we can go reformed. We're at 111% now. Can we not go reformed yet? I'm going to have to look this up and try and find out when you can go to reformed. Surprised that we can't. But we're not, we're not gaining anything from being Catholic right now. Being Catholic is just a complete waste for us, so... I mean, I could go Protestant, but it gives me an awful lot of stuff to have to re uh, to convert. So before we go Protestant, if we did go Protestant, we'd probably want to pick up something like religious ideas first to get the extra missionaries and the extra missionary strength, or maybe even humanist ideas, because that would reduce our national unrest, and we are going to be taking a lot of land. I think humanist ideas probably better than religious ideas. That may be our next idea group. We may be going for um, um, humanist ideas. We don't get our next idea group until level 10. So we're a little ways off doing that yet. Uh, are we, we are behind time in military tech. So as much as it would be nice to finish off quantity ideas, I still think we are going to have to tech up first. Um, would be nice getting that um, land maintenance modifier though. It would definitely save us some money. I think we might even go for that to be honest. Improve relations with Ragusa. We've done that. That's increased our diplomatic rep. Um, rival of our rival is for Kara. We've dealt with these guys before. They're, they're somewhere over somewhere. I have no idea where those got that you're down there. So we'll take that. Because we can easily improve relations with you. So we'll do that. We will recall our diplomat from Ragusa. You don't need to be there anymore. You are now you're allied with Austria. That's oh no, I'm clicking on Hungary. Derp. Uh recall diplomat. Okay. You are only still only allied allied with Hungary, so we could declare on Ragusa and bring Hungary in. Of course, we do have quite a bit of overextension, so doing that isn't necessarily a good idea. Because while I could take Ragusa probably safely, it's our best opportunity to take these provinces from Hungary. And of course, if we do that, we're going to definitely going to have a massive coalition against us, which I'd rather not have. I did say I wanted to get the tech, but I'm going to go and take that because it'll save us some money. It's redu reduction to our land maintenance modifier. And that'll be good because it'll allow us to start repaying some of these loans. Can we not afford to repay a single one yet? We can repay that one. Let's start paying these off. We've got five loans. We need to start getting rid of them. It's a shame we can't start any wars just so we can actually get some money. So, yeah, our big problem at the moment is aggressive expansion. Free admin power and prestige. Cannot grumble at that. I mean, I could definitely beat Hungary. I mean, if, if I were to go to war with Ragusa. Um, we've got good relations, so we'd have to wait. We could insult them and get rid of that. Poland would actually come in and help us, actually. And Poland could fight Hungary. So we don't have any issue with being able to um, defeat Hungary. My issue is my aggressive expansion. That's what's going to cause the problems here. Because there's quite a bit. We're not really up to... Well, there's a few people that would be willing to join in the coalition. But the fact that we are friends with the Emperor as well as being friends... Uh, well, allied with the Emperor as well as being allies with France. Uh, what other allies do we have, actually? I'm sure... Oh, Poland, of course. Yeah. Um, let's convert... Done a conversion. Let's carry on with these conversions. Get our religious unity up. Again... Ah, reformed. Centre of Reformation will appear. We're doing it. We're going reformed. Convert to reformed. You are... Conver I'm not too sure what you're converting to, so I'm going to cancel that. 
Um, obviously, what we need to do now is stop any sort of disasters from happening. Most of our provinces are going to convert quite quickly, which is really good. Now then, where is our center of reformation? It's actually there. Now then, are you going to convert anywhere automatically? Because the center of reformation normally converts somewhere automatically. Let's go and c convert our capital. Because it's going to be quite quick and cheap to convert the capital. And it's got a lot of... Um, we've got a lot of money for doing that for some reason. It's quite... Or did we take out more loans? What happened? Um, it's quite quick and cheap to convert the capital. And it's also worth a lot of development. Um, did we take out more loans for some reason? Not too sure what happened. Let's get those loans paid off. So we will have a looming disaster. We've got this disaster here. We need to get our religious unity to 75% or more. Or complete humanist ideas, which isn't going to happen. Progress is two each month. So we just need to start doing religious conversions as much as possible. This um, center of reformation should automatically start to tick some of these over. But it probably... Oh, it is actually sticking this one over. So this the provinces will automatically get converted. Now then, this might strain our relationships with some of our neighbours. So as you can see, we've got neighbouring heretic religion has caused some problems with Austria. Uh, as well as being allied to their rival. We don't necessarily need to stay allied to Poland. What's the negative modifier for that? Ne negative 25. Who does Austria like that we could potentially get an alliance with? Austria is allied to France, the Palatinate, and ourselves. What about France? Who are you allied to? You're allied to Scotland, Austria, Savoy. Do we want Savoy? I mean, having Poland is good. But it definitely strains relationships in both directions. And it is helping to stop the coalition at the moment. I think we just can we just get a couple of our diplomats, because we've got a few and they're not doing anything. We'll just get them to constantly improve relations with both of them. How many favours do we have with Austria? 35. Um, maintain diplomat. Just stay there. Trust is 50. We've got 35. I think we'll sp spend some favours and just increase trust. Not going to do it with Poland, because I might want to get rid of Poland at some point. Um, diplo rep, morale of navies. Let's go for the diplo rep guy. Can we get the... No, I was wondering to see if we could actually get the um, theologian. Not the theologian, the inquisitor. The inquisitor allows you to... It gives you more missionary strength. He's not available, unfortunately. That's fine. That is fine. Still still got the possibility of some rebellions. We've actually got rid of the um, that disaster already. Which was really quick. Our religious unity is already 72%. And we've not even converted Venezia yet. So, if you're not re if you're not sure how reformed works, because I know I haven't done that in a, in a lot of games recently, basically uh, with reformed you gain um, we oh, lost prestige as well. Uh, you gain. Oh, let's sort one thing out at a time. Do we want to lose prestige for some power, or lose our theologian? We'll just lose the prestige. We're already in a negative. So. Uh, let's get another conversion going. Um, Trevisio, probably. Or is that one being automatically converted? It's always worth having a look uh, which province is being automatically converted by the Center of Reformation. It's actually this one, Mantua, that's fine. Um, so, yeah, back to Reformed. 
So first of all, we get plus one possible advisors, which means whenever we go and want to hire an advisor, we have four choices. So the reason there's only three is because we've already, we're already using one, but if an advisor died, we'd have four to choose from. And while we still have an advisor, we have three to choose from instead of two. So it gives us an extra possible advisor. Um, it also gives us plus two to tolerance of heretics, which is nice. And we have these things called um, fervor points. Now, the fervor points go up um, all the time. They sort of trend up usually. As you can see, we are gaining 5.31 per year. And that's because we get plus one base. We're at peace, positive stability, and religious unity. And we also lose some for negative prestige. Now, what you can do with these points is you can toggle these things on here. We've got trade, war, and stability. When you turn these on, they cost you five points per month. But at the same time, they give you various useful things. So, for example, if we turn on trade, it'll give us plus 10% trade efficiency and plus 10% global trade power. If we turn on war, it'll give us plus 10% to the morale of our armies and the morale of our navies. And if we turn on stability, it will give us minus two national unrest and plus one diplomatic reputation. At the moment, we're making more than five a month. So I think we turn on trade, which will give us some extra money coming in. And we'll just continue doing some conversions. Uh, Mamlukian separatists are rearing their ugly heads, so let's go and start shipping down some of our troops down there so we can potentially deal with them should they um, have an uprising. Don't even know who you are, so we're not giving you military access. We probably do want to go and start doing some more fabricating claims on the Ottomans, because we haven't really been doing an awful lot of that. So, what would we like to try and take? Well, let's see if we can take the island down here. We would like to try and cut them off and, um, you know, sort of grab all of the, I guess, what's this in modern day, uh, the modern world? I know Turkey, I think, still is part of this, but this would now be Bulgaria. So, we'll be taking uh, m most of what is Bulgaria but we're just preparing for these revolts. Got a lot of manpower coming in now. We are still below the force limit, so let's just go ahead and we'll grab a few more uh, few more men. Uh, we can afford to pay off loans. While we can, let's do it, because paying off loans is less interest. So let's repay another loan. There we go. Making 18 ducats a month now. It's good to be Venice. Might even consider un unmothballing the heavies at some point. Uh, we are still below the force limit, so let's go ahead while we've got some money coming in and we'll go ahead and grab a few more light ships. Uh, we're going to maintain our diplomats with Austria and Poland because we don't want to sort of slip into sort of negative... Um, Negative reputation with them, but I might use Poland in a war against Hungary and then break the alliance with Poland. That may be what we end up doing. We've had to renew a loan there, unfortunately, but that's not too much of a problem. Let's go ahead and... Uh, what's being auto-converted? Mantua has been done. Milan's converted. You're converted. You're Catholic. Doesn't look like it's converting any of our other provinces, so we'll just start doing these ones. It's not really a, uh, a huge deal because the disaster's not going to fire now anyway. We have enough religious unity to avoid that. Let's go and put, pick the rest of these guys up. We will start getting some of the, rid of some of the mercenaries, especially as we start getting up to full manpower. If you could afford to keep mercenaries around, it's certainly worth it. I mean, you think about it. If you have an army of 20,000 men and you take a lot of losses, then all that's going to come out of your manpower. If you have an army that's 20, 000, uh, of 20,000 men and 10,000 of them are mercenaries and you take a lot of losses, you're only going to be losing half the amount of manpower because half of it's going to be mercenary losses. So there's definitely a reason to keep mercenaries around if you can afford to do it. Let's go and put you on the ships. I think I'd like to get some more transports, actually. I'd like to get up to 20 just so I can move 20 stacks around. We're very close to completing our mission, so another couple of months. In fact, one more month and that mission will be done. And hopefully put those rebellions down. Some Catholic zealots that might pop up, but that's fine. 
we are doing a lot of conversions against Catholic provinces. Now, what might happen now is that that centre of reformation may actually be starting. There we go, rival of our rival. Uh, that centre of reformation may actually be starting to flip over some of Austria's lands. In fact, it's actually starting to um, flip over Milan, which is quite nice for us. So that could be good. Also, if, if Austria start to lose... If Austria start to lose enough of their province it's, is to the Reformation, they may become reformed, which will mean we won't have that negative penalty anymore. Uh, Conquer Valis, which is um, part of Savoy. Naval race with the Ottomans. They still have quite a large fleet. What is my naval force limit? I mean, we could... We could do that. Being over the naval force limit isn't nearly as bad as being over the uh, land force limit. And what do we gain for doing it? Morale of navies, maintenance modifier, and yearly naval tradition. It's only for 10 years, though. Manpower needs to recover. I agree. We're not going to war for a little while, hopefully. So let's see if we can do that. We need to get a prestige back up. We need to get a prestige back up, get our manpower up, pay off our loans, get rid of our war exhaustion, which is probably mostly gone by now. Yeah, there's 14 months left of war exhaustion, so that's not too much of a problem. Um, no disasters going on currently. We're still falling behind in terms of tech and stuff a little bit. Would like to get the next admin tech, would like to get the next military tech. We don't seem to be making an awful lot of points... We're not focused on anything specifically. We could focus on military to finish our military idea group. Let's go and do that. We'll it's a bit of a more even spread there. You find you don't have to focus as much when you are doing... Um, let's get Cyprus. You find you don't have to focus, um, move the focus as much when you are playing a Republic. Because you can select what type of leader you get. In fact, our current leader, how old is he? Um, our current leader, I was looking in the right place to begin with. He's 32. He's 32 and we're at 100 Republican tradition, so he's probably worth keeping around. So we'll definitely want to do that. We don't have to worry about relations with the Pope anymore, because we are no longer Catholic. Um, he is allied with Castile and Portugal, which does mean that Naples would be fighting against him, but we could deal with that. So the reason why I didn't want to be Catholic, apart from the fact that we weren't gaining anything from being part of that religion because of our relations with the Pope, is I do want to form Italy. Now, if you form Italy, this problem goes away anyway, so we don't have to worry too much about that. Um... But there's, there are things in this game called triggered modifiers, um, and triggered modifiers are basically... Things that change the state of the game based on things that have happened or places that you occupy and stuff like that. If you, you can find the button for it down here at the bottom. Um, it's the fourth button. It's the strange little one before find provinces and that's triggered modifiers. And if you open that and you look at this list, you can see these different things you can do. Now what we'd be doing here is there's the conquest of Rome. And if you hold Rome, the conquest of Rome. So basically if you hold Rome... You get right. That, that's that's what you have to do to get this. You have to own Rome or own Roma. If you own Roma, you get plus one missionary and plus one yearly prestige. So owning Rome is really good. Now there's another one that's called the occupation of Rome. Now occupation of Rome isn't actually listed at the moment because I'm no longer Catholic. But if you're Catholic, if you're Catholic and you occupy Rome or you own Rome, or one of your vassals owns Rome. It doesn't matter if the papal state's your vassal. If the papal state's your vassal and they own Rome, it's fine. But if you own Rome, or one of your other vassals that isn't the papal state owns Rome, then you get minus one diplomatic reputation, and there's another negative penalty as well. Plus you keep getting these constant events that pop up, where you can either give Rome back to the papal state, or you get more negative modifiers. Now, if you, if you form Italy, that goes away, but also if you're or as long as you're Catholic, no, as long as you're Christian or Muslim and not Catholic, because obviously Catholic is part of the Christian group. So as you can get that event as long as, uh, well, I can't even remember because the modifier's gone, but yeah, as long as you're not um, Catholic, there's no downside to occupying Rome. What's this thing here? Submission to the Emperor is not the Emperor of the HRE, is not Italy, 
And capital is part of the HRA. Yeah, that just basically means you become part of the empire, which we don't really care about doing. We don't want to do. We're too big to become part of the HRE anyway. So we do have some more lights. Let's go and get them all together. You are going to go and protect trade in Venice. Making a decent amount of money now from trade. 31 ducats a month. That's nice. We've got almost 20 ducats a month coming in. Fair bit going on for maintenance. Unfortunately, there for Milan, they're getting um, sieged out again. That, is that another light? Yes, it is. Let's go and get you back over there. We have a call to arms. The nation of Austria, your faithful ally, is requesting that you come to their aid in the Austrian conquest of Aachen against Aachen and Cleves. Well, we're going to accept. Um, it's not really... Obviously, that fails our mission, which we expected. We're not really going to have to do anything in this mission, so I'm not... Uh, in this uh, war, so I'm not really bothered about it. Uh, Conquer Volis, naval race against the Ottomans. We're getting the same old missions over and over again, aren't we? Um, I mean, we could go and conquer Volis. They are... Who are they allied to? They're allied to France. That's a little bit problematic. If we declared war on them, France would come in to their aid. So maybe we don't want to do that. Maybe we still want to go and take out Ragusa and Hungary and take a little bit of land from them. But that is something that I'll consider for the next video. So thanks a lot for watching, guys. I hope you're still enjoying EU4 as Venice. I'll see you next time. And until then, goodbye for now.